Good evening, everyone. I'm Mia Allman, founder of Official Woman of Culture, and along with me is Pastor Rosemary Roth, founder of Alpha Point. Tonight, we have a special presentation. We are celebrating a birthday and a celebration and tribute to Louise Bennett, Miss Lou. So let's get started. Pastor Rosemary Roth, take it away. Hello, girlfriend. Imagine hey. today Louise Bennett would be 102 years old. I tell you something, Jamaica missed that woman so till. Imagine that lady make Patwa sound good. She make English became official second language in Jamaica. Consider this. When somebody say, have a seat, darling, you turn around and you look. But in Jamaica, if your mother says, sit down there, sir, you know you have to move quickly and take a seat. Because of Louise Bennett, many of us have enjoyed our patois. We have enjoyed sharing our culture. We have enjoyed being separated and different from everybody else, just knowing that we are Jamaican. I'm in a movie and I tell you, in a very little bit of time, when you see the movie, it says, I am Jamaican. And Patwa separates us from everybody else because it's a, it's a conglomerate, I'm going to use the word, a combination of Creole and English and Spanish and African and everything all rolled up so we can all communicate and understand each other and express the beauty that is in our culture and express the vibrancy that is in our heart. We're Jamaicans, exactly. So when we lost our Miss Lou, we lost our family member. Jamaica has lost one of its most vibrant citizens. And because of that, all of us think that she's our mama. You understand what I'm saying? She is our auntie, Miss Lou. She's our grandma, Miss Lou. She's our teacher, Miss Lou. She's our professor, Miss Lou. And because of that tonight, I am humbled. I'm honored to represent Alpha Point and Women of Culture. As a woman of culture to another woman of culture, Miss Lou, we honor you tonight. On our guest list tonight, we have Dr. Opal Palmer Adessa. She is coming on in a little bit. We have Dr. Pat Smith, Angeline Rhodes, Violet Lawrence, and we have the songbird herself is coming on. Mama Claudette is gonna, mm, she's gonna take us places. And of course, you know, we have a lot of chickens, a lot of hens in this hen house. We have to have a little rooster. So we have Prince X who is gonna be coming on to keep us ladies kinda in line. He is so committed to Miss Lou that, believe you me, us women can't do her justice like Prince, Prince X. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and great pleasure that we're here tonight. So, Mia, are you still there, darling? <laughs> I just want to know who is there with me and how things going, man. I have... I need to talk to somebody. This place here is me alone trying to figure out who is out there. <laughs> Help me. Are you there, darling? You're being very... You, imagine. Oh, my goodness. Miss Violet Lawrence, mother. Hey, baby girl. How are you doing? I am fine. I am fine. I'm so happy to be here and be part of this celebration. Miss Lou is well, famous. thank you for the idea to do this because this was your idea, you know, girlfriend. <laughs> okay, the open mic, right? <laughs> well, yes. we were to do an open mic, but yes. tonight we're going to be honoring the great, honorable Dr. Louise Bennett Coverley. Yes, are are. you ready? Take it away for me, darling. Go ahead. Okay, I'm on the spot. You ready? Okay. Yes, go ahead, yes. Mama. Take it. It's, been a, it's a pleasure. Um. Miss Lou, I mean, I, you already introduced her, and we have all. I grew up listening to Miss Lou poems, and at our school in Claxville, St. Anne, Jamaica, we that was a part of our culture. We had to learn Miss Lou point for, poems and recite them at festival events. 
and also at um you know at local events our principal was very very um very into the culture and, and helping us to grow and learn who we are so it's my pleasure to, to do one of the points that i learned at that time and this poem is called love letter and as you know our jamaican men can be very colorful and um, very um, persuasive when they're trying to um, romance or trying to get get the, the female um, to come on their side. Love letter um, is, uh, and I, I'll read the intro. The exuberance of the Jamaican male suitor has frequently lent itself to carry culture. Here, a love letter with some rather original terms of endurement catches the spirit of uninhibited passion. So in our own words, our patois, I present. My darling love, my little dove, my dumpling, my gizada, my sweetie Sue, I goes for you like how fly goes for sugar. As I put my pen on paper and my bend and start to fly, remember and remember the first day you catch me eye. You did just a come off on tramp car. A bus was to your right. I can't sweep past the left ears. And you stand up stiff with fright. Your jaw drop. Your mouth open like when jackass are yawn. And my heart go boogle boogle. I mean, no one make me born. Just call me little letter love. Me laugh after it, yeah? Me learning not too good. But what me can't spell, me withdraw. The thing in the corner with the freckles is my heart. The plate of yam and selfish means we shall never part. See how me draw the two faces and I look for one another? One is me and one is you. Take which one you rather. It's not a cockroach foot this. It's a finger with a ring. And it means I want to marry you. The line is a piece of string. Take it, put on the wedding finger on your wedding hand. Careful, forget the right size and give it to this man. No sweet rice, keep swell till I see you next. Accept this youthful heart with love and banda eggs. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> so that's a proposal. Yes, that was a, a, a marriage proposal. <laughs> <laughs> and Imagine course, Lou, this how romantic really that sense. can be with your gizzard. <laughs> with the gizzard. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if this was written in the 1960s because they talk about tramp car. You know, in those days, they had tramp cars. They didn't have, you know, regular, they had regular cars, but they also had tramp cars in Kingston in those days. Oh, thank you so much. Do you have another one for us? You have another one for me? No. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's... Okay. Yes, man. If not, you can save it for a little later. We don't mind. You come back again, you know. Well, you know what? Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let me I'll come back later. Let's go to evening time. Work is over now. It's evening time. Me, they walk for mountain, they walk for mountain, they walk for mountain side. Make we cook the pickle upon the way. Make we eat and sing, dance and play, ring ding upon the mountain side. See y'all later. <laughs> oh, see in a little bit. That'll be nice. Thank you, Miss Violet Lawrence. Okay, the one I'm and only Violet, Violet Lawrence. Ah, what darling. Good, what good. See you later. What good. You just stay, don't go too far. Don't go too far, you know, man. Don't go too far. All right. Me all right. W bouncing back here, Miss Angeline. Where your auntie cousin is right here now. And you may get the idea from to call me say Auntie Cousin. Angeline. Hi, Auntie Cousin. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell anybody where this comes from. Only only Miss Lou can make little something sound big. I know, right? I make little something make trouble. You make trouble. <laughs> Won't tell you, me about your auntie and your cousin. Dear Lord. <laughs> and Jamaica, only Jamaica one, this thing can happen, you know. Only oh, Jamaica yes, one, you can have an auntie and you steal your cousin. Me and my you father are cousin too, you know. Me not I like know, you. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Me know, so when me did a grow up in a Clarinda, my mother used to tell me, don't marry to no Sims, no Stuart or no Alison, because they are all of them are your cousins. <laughs> oh, Lord. And you know what? When I got married, they tell me, careful which parish you go to. So when we go to another parish, and the man's name was Dyer. I mean, nice. We said, good. But him spell it D-I-A-H, meaning you ask him, where you, Glenn, where you there? Me Dyer. That was it. <laughs> Only to find out, semi cousin. Hey, what can I tell you? So, is me, is me, so my auntie cousin. That's yes. my story. Maybe stick with it. Yes. All right. <laughs> oh, I see. I, all you guys, you guys are promoting Colgate toothpaste. You remember Jamaican when we used to promote to, go Colgate toothpaste? Oh, all you smell nice and bright and stuff. All right. Come on, Angeline. Tell us about Miss Lou, girlfriend. Well, we grew up with Miss Lou from primary school to high school. I especially loved it when we were in high school because we had what we call I Stedford. And in I Stedford, we had a poetry competition and it was just Jamaican dialect, just absolutely amazing. We used to really enjoy it. Um, in the process of me learning about, you know, about, about Miss Lou and what she did just for our culture. No, it's it's almost like everywhere I go, and, I, and I, I don't currently live in Jamaica. Everywhere I go, people want to hear me talk patwa. Talk just a little bit. That's what they tell me. Just, just give me a little bit. <laughs> you know. So I'm, I'm just absolutely proud and just um, amazed at what this woman has accomplished for us and just, just appreciate her so much. Um, one of our influences was actually Joan Andrea Hutchinson. And uh, I'm going to do one of the points that she wrote that was also influenced by Miss Lou standing up for our Jamaican patois that now separates us from the world and everybody now trying to speak what we are, have always, uh, what we have learned from Miss Lou that we need to be proud of. So let's talk about Workaholic by Joan Andrea Hutchinson. Me feel says somebody must be setting thing for me, make me not no look. For all me try, me try. Try till me cry. Me cannot get a walk. Me applicate till me finger head them blister. Me walk till me shoes them tear. And every turn me turn, sorry, no vacancy today, is all me ever seem for here. But one day me should come in and me land a job and me say, yes, me walking done. But the little walking at the decorative shop this disappear, like butt against hot sun. First man in one bossy woman, she come in there. I show off on a pop style. Here are. Excuse me, darling. Can I see your kitty lights for ceramic style? Missy, come out of my shop with your bottle self. I go on like say your nice. We don't install ceramic in a touch hut and you cannot pay the price. Whichever we call capture one, you have a little zinc up house pan. It's kindly go back there. But you want to install ceramic in your hut. <laughs> if I laugh a day today. Well, I saw me lose that day walk and me get depressed. But me decide to say me now go stop. And one of my church sister them get a work for me at him sister beauty shop. But he look like someone we no born for work. Like with this, born for stay poor. Because be the second day me lose that they work and sit there, me out a door. Just because that the owner lady, Bigfoot, dryed friend, we no give no tea. She mean, come in with her boss herself, but she had a date and she want a proper cream. Me say, aye. We don't cream so so scalp. What's that they had here? I know we never expect a miracle. You better find a wig so weird. What next woman oh come on that? I can't tell me. Say rush. Mr. Darling, you need all the help you can get with that the coconut brush. But nobody never tell me say it was the boss, lady mother. Until she called me aside, tell me to be polite to the customer them. And she said, if me slip, me slide. So hear me now. We do facial, foot show, washing sets. Our service never fails. Lady, 
you need to wash your head and clean out the kurokura under your fingernails. Now the Bible says, speak the truth and speak it ever. Be faithful to the end. But it look like me just cut out for the hypocrite. I see that? Me out of street again. One dentist man asked me to work for him while in reception is gone to leave. And me the second day in the bow ballad man put me out, me couldn't believe. Just cause me tell when I'm teaching, when I'm patient, them saying teeth, they look like you would give the dentist slack jar. And me tell another woman, say, feel your mouth full of rotten teeth, should I punish you, baby? My next man come in there, ball and a hollow, oh, two teeth make him numb. Me say, aye. Me no know no dentist where pull no sauce or gum. Well, no. Me convince. Say me not supposed to work. And even though me poor like a church mouse. Me. <laughs> me I go enjoy for me life. And cock up. In a me house. <laughs> Angeline, Angeline Rose, how could you, girl? How could you? <laughs> how could you make yourself unemployed? <laughs> Carlene, you need to follow your sister and tell us if she told us the truth. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Well, is she telling the truth? Yes, she is. <laughs> but we didn't go to the same school. I went to the Bush, the, 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 the Bushra School up on top of Knox Hill, Knox College, and then the Glen Murdoch and the Flat Dung there. So, yeah. So, even in my house, we had rivalry. But the thing I liked Facebook. about Miss Lou and just the dialect and her love Facebook. for poetry and culture was that mm -hmm. every year okay, we had the privilege of going right. to um, the JCDC competition and we would do poems and it would be a delight to do Miss Lou poems. And the part I love about them was that she brought out reality in a humorous kind of way and even that poem with Angeline, you don't know how much that kind of hits home a little bit with some persons, especially when they're unemployed and then they're just struggling and trying so hard to find what to do. But then my favorite Miss Lou poem is New Scholar. And when I say this poem, you will figure out why it's called New Scholar. So if you will permit me, New Scholar by Louise Bennett. Good morning, teacher. No, I want to teach you my teacher. My name is Sarah Poole. And this is for my boy, Michael. And him, me just bring him to school. In born one rainy day, ma. It was coming on tonight. Ugly baby can grow pretty for true. Because this one was a sight. In born the week when Rufus Jackfruit tree did start to bear. The same month Obi Pig dead, but me forgot the year. We call him me, Mike, Mikey, J, Jakey, Jacob Jack. But him rightful name is Michael Jacob Alexander Black. Now treat him rough, your teacher. Him is a sickly child. You touch him hard, him starts to make nice. Some people say him quiet. Take time with me, our teacher. And if him rude and start to rave, just beat another picnic armor and him be frightened and behave. Cause enough time when we do a yard and Jakey won't hear me at all. We just beat the bedpost hard, yama, and you want to see Jakey ball. But now that you know him little ways, I know I have nothing to fear. That anything we mail him, so I left him in your care. Ay ay ay. So that's <laughs> So that's my tribute to Miss Lou, ladies. I have more. <laughs> so we can say Miss Lou poems forever and ever and ever. You never get tired um, of them. I was a sickly child too. 
and I got <laughs> saved by the belt, of, saved from the belt a few times. But tell me something. You know that Miss Lou, as we have said earlier, was a huge loss for the world, not just to Jamaica alone. And um, Noel Alexander, president of the National Council of Jamaicans and supportive organization in Canada said, we also lost someone very, very important to us in Canada. She was born in Jamaica, capital of Kingston in 1919. Bennett Coverley studied both at home and in London, where she was the first black student at the UK's Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. And you know, some people think to say she never goes to school. She was very educated. Early in her career, she appeared in comedy roles on Jamaican television and in pantomimes, as well as on children's television, serving as the resident artist on the BBC TV show, Caribbean, Carnival for several years and on the Jamaican children's show they call Ring Ding. I heard that the, um, the Gleaner never wanted her to write for the Gleaner, but when other people start using her work and she became famous, they run to her and pay her. Imagine she'd have done it for free. That was so funny. However, when she began traveling the world, telling stories, giving lectures, singing songs, and performing her poetry in Jamaican patois, some criticized her and they were embarrassed by it. However, the groundbreaking poet, actress, singer, and storyteller ultimately helped to make her country's oral tradition an accepted language worldwide and was eventually hailed as a cultural ambassador for her country called Jamaica's National Treasure and its first lady of comedy. We look like her, not true? Sure, man. I saw it go, you know, sometimes you have to eggs up a little bit until you start looking like the person. But anyway, Miss Lou, <laughs> that's my story. As I say, I will stick with it. Anything I tell you here tonight, I'm going to stick with it. So over the years, Bennett Coverley published, published several collections and other writings, such as Jamaican Labrish, Selected Poems, and Anansi Stories, and Miss Lou. Her recordings credit includes Jamaican folk songs. The Honorable Miss Lou listened to the Honorable Miss Lou listened to Louise and Yes, me dear Miss Lou live. She also appeared in several Jamaican films. Among her many honors, Beverly, um, Bennett Coverley had been named a member of the Order of the British Empire, the Order of Jamaica, and Jamaica's Order of Merit, an honor that is only bestowed on. 15 living Jamaicans at any one time. Miss Lou, yes ma, she have plenty to tell you. And in case you wonder what Miss Lou look like, she wrote this book. She said, Miss um, Auntie wrote, she said, and it was amazing. I found this online with her signature. How lucky can one girl be? Imagine that wishing somebody Merry, um, Merry Christmas. Look at that with her signature. The person who sold it had no idea who she was. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're so, so blessed. We're so, so honored. We have two of the most fabulous women on our show. Um, you know, when you have you ever ha you have your dinner as a little child and you eat the, the yam and the dumpling and you take your time and you work around the meat and you leave it for last and you take your time and then they push jump up on the table and yam it <laughs> <laughs> honestly honestly i yeah, don't want yeah. that happen to me tonight me watching me dumpling me yam me mother and me have me hand a cover up for me salting because this your marriage tonight, I go last forever. Nobody's nobody pulling it apart. I have Doctor uh, Professor Opal on the line, and I have Songbird. I don't even know which one of them I want to call right now, but I know that I want the both of them. And according to what I was instructed, two people can talk one time. So, oh. who ready? Anyone are you ready? Songbird. Let's have a song. Right. Who has the song? Songbird have a song? Do you Since sing, Professor Opal? Okay. Songbird. 
Mrs. Child, is which part you there? How your headdress looks so good? My one there on her back. Me couldn't tie it properly at all. Lord, Seriously, Lord, man. Or ear over here, so hot. You see, all in a light, light enough for me here tonight. Jeez, some peas. Um, Lord, I don't want to look so hot. Let me look. All of them people they're behind the show. Oh, yes, ma. Look good. Look so nice. Oh, no, 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 no. Stay night, salad. <laughs> This long time girl may never see you. Come make me hold you, hand. This long time girl may never see you. Come make me hold your hand. Peel a drum, cross the downtown tree top, pick up the blossom. Make me hold you, hand, girl. Make me hold your gun. This long time girl me never see you. Come make we walk and talk. This long time girl me never see you. Come make we walk and talk. Peel a drum, cross the dung pantry top, pick off the blossom. Make me hold your hand, girl. Make me hold your hand. Make me wheel and turn till we tumble down. Make me hold you hand, girl. Make me wheel and turn till me tumble down. Make me hold you hand, girl. Boy, we well, really look nice and pretty up there, so you know. So, my one of country, we... which country you come from? Clarendon, Mocker, we... peace. <laughs> Galang, we... child. They really look good on us, and they you know. But <laughs> yeah. let me swallow. And we feel it. good, you see. We'll see you back later, not you. You want me to go? Actually, you know. Yeah, but we had it. What are you had it? We had it. She not ready yet to go along too. Well, well, yeah. let me go along till since I you know, make it light. I burn up, burn up my face, you know. I mean, yeah, this I go like a twinkle, twinkle like a starlight. Lord, then I saw when you come on upon them, that platform there, someone sitting in your yard, missus. Light over, yes, a light over there, so light, light behind your light back on your Jesus. Let me, me, me hurry up before me. I forgot me. I forgot give me one mouth to recite <laughs> Hey, boy. Yes, man. This long time girl was Miss Miss Louise Doctor. Louise Bennett Coverley. That was our opening song. That was our welcome to the world. Our welcome to the show. You know, you have a call in everybody. So tonight, you know, we up here now. We are celebrating. How much years, years old? I mean, year old she is. 102. Lord, me Africa start straighten up. Look, because you are reach 103. Yes, man. So, me have one little tribute to know before me sing again. Listen, no. Who no run? Come, man. Come on. Call on a friend, man. Who no call everybody? YouTube, YouTube, DTube, all kind of tube. Call everybody. Tell them run. Come, run, come. Big celebration of Galang here. Yes, man. You see? We've come. You say. Rock your body, oh, rock your body, oh, Bali. Come on. Rock your body, oh, rock your body, oh, Bali. Bongo people, man, oh, rock your body. Oh, you know, when you go a dance, you know, you can't just go a dance and turn up, think you, think you. You have to rock the body, man. So all I know is they're on the platform and those who are look. When the need to start to rock the body because it's party we're having, you know. Celebration is in the house. Yes, man. Make we dance and prance and celebrate our lady of distinction, the Honorable Louise Bennett Coverley birthday party, 102 years is old. Yes, man, today is the big day. Me don't know if you remember then when Miss Lulie Depp and Big State done a, 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 a downtown man, a, a ward theater, you know, with Ronnie. Eh? Every minute is mass. Ron and Miss Lou, me don't know if you remember that. What a brilliant woman she is, he. Jeez, man. She was a liar, educator, doctor, teacher, singer, actor. You name it, because if me start talking where she was, I, I must say another 20 years before me finish. Anyway, she empower with culture, you know. She empower with culture with her richness. You know, she bring proverbs and she bring storytelling, folklore, dialect, dance, and prance. And she, I mean, she, I, you talk about reggae. Hey, woman can pop a lick, you see. 
she the list gone man she was very good you know and uh, she met the lavish where we are chat today going at all house school because you know when you're picking you go my chat but you if you don't mind shop your mother box out your teeth so yes man miss lou she said no you know them say we corrupt we're not corrupt she said miss lou said no we derived we're not corrupt at all we derived and she brought folklore of course to the highest level and me can't forget you know me did the ringing you know me used to the jbc I, I mean, you know, when you pick me up, push up like a bit, you know, I made it there at JBC. I made it like to go up on our show. I all the people in them love to go up on our show, and then, you know, they're all out. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, Miss, 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 Miss Lou. Yes, ring ding. And then another song where she loved. Archie Tipodo. Some of them are hala, some of them are chichi bodo. Some of them are hala, some of them are blackboard. And I know you may talk, you know. So I'm about to paint on the finger and talk about shot about some are black, but some are clean, clean, some of them are bella, some are part, some are teacher, some of them are holla, some are part, some are preacher, some of them are holla, some are bar, some are chick man chick, some of them are holla, some are bar, some are you, some of them are holla, some are bar, some are me, some of them are mama, some are bar, some are clean, clean. Some of them are hala, some are bad. A chichi bodo. Some of them are ha, some are bad. Just a little bit of appetite. We're going to appetite till later. Go along. Hi, hi, hi. They're reading sweet. They're reading sweet, man. How oh, yes. you stay so young, man? How oh, you stay so yeah. young, Inga, man? Yeah, shine up my face with olive oil and coconut oil and all kind of oil. And you walk down the aisle too, you know, so you have to practice. Walk down the aisle, rub up some oil, pan your hand, your back, your foot. And you know, when the pain I take your life, my sister, you know, me can't make people know, say me have all arthritis. He had to me see every minute. And me did kind of afraid to come on tonight because me said, then I, I, when me I go up on big, bigger stage and I, I home if you come on, I me couldn't know which button to push and which button. Boy, on the technician, good, sir. What a way with the pan platform, all kind of farm. We now wear a platform boot no more with the pan a higher platform. Anyway, all Miss right. Rose, that long All right, you not go too, you tan toddy, tan toddy, not go too far. Yes, no, you know, don't go too me, far. Me, me because the pan, the pan, 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 pan me. Oh, you tat, sir. Mm -hmm. It... <laughs> Uh, should I diagnose this as menopause? Menopause at all. You? You know <laughs> no, no, no. Me know so me I'm talking to you and me sit down right here so me not pausing. No, so Me not have no full stop of the man na, na, na semicolon. Me this sit down steady. Tantody. Tantody, girl. Tantody. Tantody, big woman at all now. All right, girl. Ladies and gentlemen, all my friends, Hey, look who is online. Look who is here. Professor Opal, my auntie, my girlfriend, my friend, my mother. Everything I go on. What's up, pretty mama? How are pretty, you? I am wonderful. Pretty back at all of you. Amazing. Thanks for those songs. Uh, thanks for bigging up Miss Lou, the queen mother of Jamaica, the queen mother of verse and wisdom. And who has, as everyone has said, really celebrated Jamaica and has really made us feel proud to be Jamaica. And she did that at a time when, which cost her a lot. You know, we're celebrating Miss Lou now, but we need to remember. And I remember when I interviewed her in 1987, where she was not celebrated. Many Jamaicans, middle class Jamaicans in particular, who controlled the media and the message at that time, uh, frowned on Miss Lou and really fought actively against her because she spoke the Jamaican nation language or Patwa. So Miss you, Miss Lou, we know her as a comic, we know her as smiling, and everyone I spoke to says that's who she was. But behind that smile was a fighter. She was Nanny's daughter. She was a warrior. 
and she was a strategist. And so that amazing book that you got, uh, Rosemary with Miss Lou uh, Auntie Rotisse, where obviously someone is totally uh, unaware. You know, Miss Lou had to create that character, Auntie Roche, as a buffer so that she could say the things she needed to say, the truth, the, the vast truth about Jamaica and not be attacked. And so that is the kind of strategist that she was. And as the songbird said, you know, if we were to recount all the things that Miss Lou was and did in her life, we would be here for another 20 years. One of the things that I want to underscore is that Miss Lou was a serious ethnographer. She traveled throughout Jamaica and she collected folklores and stories and songs because she understood the value. And you might even say she was prophetic in that she understood that there would come this time when we might not be paying as much attention as we should to our culture. And our children will need to know their Nancy story. They will need to know chicken Mary Ark is near. You know, these proverbs that we were raised on that are not being used anymore. And it is because of the very careful work Miss Lou did going throughout Jamaica, especially in the rural years of Jamaica, as an ethnographer and collecting these stories that we have them. And, you know, I never talk about her as being dead because her work lives and she will always live. And this is what she has bequeathed us, this rich, diverse body of work. And I just want to say that I've just completed an anthology, 100 Plus Voices for Miss Lou, and that was my way of paying tribute to her because when I first interviewed her in 1987, I had wanted to do a biography of her and then it became too overwhelming and with children and just starting my academic career, I didn't do that. And so this anthology of over 100 different contributors of poetry, tributes, interviews and stories is my way of putting together a multifaceted and varied voices that sing Miss Lou. But I want to share one of my favorite poems of Miss Lou and then one of the poems I wrote that was inspired by Miss Lou. And just to talk about this poem, because when I interviewed her, Jamaican woman, which a lot of you have probably known, know, when I interviewed her, I said, so Miss Lou, are you a feminist? She says, Lord, my dear, that's a new word. But I was always concerned about women and women's issue. And of course, she has many poems in which she's speaks to the issue of women and the way in which women um, are treated and the way in which women have to navigate this patriarchal space to be heard, to be seen. And nowhere is this better done than in this poem, Jamaican Woman. And so um, indulge me and let me share it for you and then I'll talk a little bit about it. And then I'll share one of my own poems that I wrote that was inspired by Miss Lou. Because my poetry and my stories uh, just the ability to give voice in the Jamaican language, which even when my first collection was published in 1985, I was, you know, people were saying, people aren't going to understand uh, how people are speaking. And I said, what are you talking about? This is how Jamaicans speak. They don't speak standard English. We speak the Jamaican language. We speak Patwa, which, as you know, have been said before, is a combination of three from Ghana, because most of us are from Ghana, ancestry in Africa, and English and Spanish. And we have created this Creole language, which is how some academics refer to it, which is distinctly Jamaican, distinctly ours, and articulates the sensibilities about who we are in such an amazing way. So for instance, The New Scholar, which is a poem that I would, would have read later, but was read so wonderfully, here we see a mother's love for her child, you know, and she wants to make sure that he isn't treated in the way that a lot of children were treated then, beaten and stuff. So she creates this wonderful story about when he was born and if you lick the bedpost. You know, again, Miss Lou is melding many forms of storytelling, instructing, you know, cultural cosmology. All of that is embedded in that story. Similarly, um, the, the other story, Love Letters. You know, we don't celebrate Miss Lou's love letter, but there's another poem in the collection about Mango, where again, another man is courting. 
you know, we tend not to think about how we talk about love and how men and women talk about love. And so Miss Lou has these lovely, lovely uh, love poems that again are very much rooted in the culture. Who else is going to say, you know, you're like my sweet gazada, you know what I mean? Or who else is going to say, I, I love you like how fly love sugar. That is so Jamaican. And so Miss Lou has, is a cultural activist and a cultural archivist because she captures the best of us and she puts it so well. You know, you just want to laugh and smile and your heart swell. You feel big because that's how she makes you feel. But let me go to my favorite poem of Miss Lou, Jamaican Oman. And uh, it's a pity, Rosemary, that we can't have a conversation because I would love to hear uh, some of these women input on uh, this poem. Jamaican woman kuno sa is how them gin also. Look how long them liberated and the man them never know. Look how long Jamaican woman, mother, sister, wife, sweetheart, out a road and in a yard they pan a dominate her part. From Monroe, nanny take her body bones bullet back pan man to a nowadays gal picnic turn spelling bee champion. From the grassroots to the hilltop in profession, skill and trade, Jamaican woman take her time the mouth and make the grade. Some back a man a push, some side a man a hold him hand, some a lick sense in a man head. Some a guide him, pan him, plan. Neck and neck and foot and foot with man. She buckle hold her own. While man a call her sorcerer. <laughs> Woman a ton back bone. And long before woman lay broke out over foreign land, Jamaica female was a liberated her plan. Jamaica woman know she strong. She know she tell her what. But she no want her pick the damn fist that call her poopa. So the Kuno Jamaican woman go on like pantsuit in style. And Jamaican man no know she wear the trousers all the while. So Jamaican woman cooks in family budget from explore. And so Jamaican man a sing, woman a heavy load. But the Kuno Jamaican woman ban her belly, bite her tongue, catch water, put pot pan fire, and just dig her to a ground. For woman lock a dongle eat, some rooted more than some. But as long as fowl a scratch dongle eat, woman lock must come. Little by little man start praise her. Day by day the praise a grow. I saw him praise her. I saw it sweeter. But she wonder if him know. So this is a, a really fabulous feminist poem that we can really deconstruct stanza by stanza. And it's really developed in a very clever way. So we start, she starts out by just saying we're a Kuno woman. And for those of us who don't know what uh, Kuno is, it's, it's not the same as Jinal, but what it says is though, is that a woman has to use all of her smarts all of all all the things that she knows you know all her woman ways in order to be who she is right and then so she gives us a, it's a it's a narrative it's a beautiful narrative poem so she gives us the history nanny you know and nanny is one of the only female heroines on in jamaica still and nanny of course there are lots of mythology around nanny and lots of stories around nanny but what we do know that nanny comes from the ghanaian tradition of queen mother and would be a queen mother and the queen mother in Ghana still today is the one who decides who will be the next king. So, you know, they have to bring it to her council. So we have Nanny. So she sets the foundation that Nanny, Jamaican women are all Nanny, right? We all are strong. We all are powerful. We all know how to get things done. And then she says from Nanny, the line, the lineage is from Nanny to Spelling Bee Champion, right? So she's, she's, she's given us that that uh, roadmap that leads from Nanny to here, it didn't end with Nanny. And we would be naive to think that it ended with Nanny because it continues in our children, those little girls who are now spelling being champion. And then she goes on, you know, to talk about uh, 
all the things that women do in terms of cooks in the family budget and those things and the wonderful wonderful line that about wearing pants suit as style and she doesn't want her children to call her poopa you know and again she talks about how we need to be subterfuge you know it's not like nowadays at that time a lot of women knew they were strong and it's not so much that they propped up the men but they didn't um they gave the men you know that space to be while they were the ones behind already doing all the things she does and so you know the poem ends as it should that now men are recognizing the strength and the multiple roles that a woman play in the house and outside the house and he's praising her and she's just you know smug um you know not flustered not any hoop to lose but she says she wonders if he knows that she all along has been in control has been running things even though he might be fronting and taking some of that so it's a really uh well constructed well developed uh poem from stanza to stanza that shows why miss louis saying jamaican oman kunoso you know and 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 all of the ways in which we have to be kuno but that ultimately and finally we are strong in multiple ways and we share our strength in all of the ways in which we care for our children our men and our family so it's one of my favorite poem i've written about it you know i've uh, analyzed it and i've done some things on it but um miss lu so another thing i want to say is that um whereas i love what the jc does in terms of having children recite miss lu's pro poems i wish however that they would offer some more interpretation because a lot of the times the poems are done large and big and while i think that is some element of the poems that i think the poems resonate on so much level and the complexity of the poems sometimes get lost because we over dramatize them and we seek to privilege the drama as opposed to the content and the content in these poems are really um layered and have a, have a lot of double entendre that's going on in the poems so i am definitely an advocate of miss lu i want to encourage you uh the anthology 100 plus voices um that is being published by the university press and will be available for purchase in another month and it features as i said over 104 different voices included a forward by lorna goodison it includes uh the interview i did with miss lu which was published in my dissertation but which was never published publicly before so it includes almost all of one of the interviews it includes a wonderful tribute by the current may uh, um minister oliver grange uh the minister of culture gender entertainment and sports and then i had the wonderful opportunity to interview the former prime minister pj patterson who has a wonderful piece in there about the former the miss lu and the relationship that they have um it has four sections and each section we start with a poem by miss lu including the poem that i'm forgetting the name of the first lady who read that love letter that's uh one of the poems in there by her and it's in section 1 where it's about one big family and of course we have pieces in there by her son Fabian Coffey and then you know Miss Lou took in a lot of children and raised and educated them and so their peace is in the by by her uh uh and just, of course Mervin Morris who is one of the former of the scholars of the and who edited the collective collection and who I think was one of the first scholars that said Miss Lou was a poet you know in a time when she wasn't being touted as a poet she was being touted as a comedian as being a theater ambassador with pantomime and so there's a wonderful piece in the collection by Mervyn Morris about Miss Lou and Eric Coveley you know and their uh, amazing relationship which uh, ultimately led them to move to Canada because of his help and then there just obviously you know just some other amazing piece uh Eastern Lee who died and who worked with her as an ethnographer in fact when Miss Lee gave up traveling around Jamaica um to collect stories and poems and 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 things like that 
she had trained Isan Lee. So I had an opportunity to interview him and his piece is in there. Faye Ellington, who worked with her in one of the first pantomimes is in there. Olive Samuels, the comic is in there. So it's just a rich collection of multiple voices from Jamaica, um, from England, you know, Linton Kwesi Johnson, uh, Muta Baruka, there's a poem if, if I have time later on, Dotty Tuff, you know, where Muta Baruka talks about Miss Lou as being the first dub poet, which she was, um, and a recording that he did with her and the relevance of that poem still today. So, you know, I wanna make sure everybody has an opportunity to share their wealth and their experience and their love of Miss Lou. And I want to read one of my poems that was inspired by her, and then I'll turn it over to someone else and come back in later if there is time. So market woman, as I said, I, you know, I went to Woolmers and at that time, at that time when I was going to Woolmers, um, if we spoke Patwa or Jamaican nation language, we would get a detention. We had an English headmistress, um, Mrs. Miss Pinter, and she, her job, she thought, was to take Jamaica out of us. And uh, so when I started writing, I didn't write, use Jamaican language. And my mother loved Miss Lou and took us to pantomime and would, we would listen to Miss Lou. And when I gained my voice, in fact, I didn't gain my voice until I learned to weave Jamaican nation language with uh, standard English. And this poem does that. I will elephant sapadilia rear walk tall, elegant, more poised than vine models of woo. My lifeline is not the whisper delicacy of a rose's petal. It tells of the unyielding of the earth of time, of scrubbing on rocks back, clothes stained with guineps and aprons marked with yams, of boofs on a boy child's back growing without a man. See these breasts heaving, still firm, taunting men eyes. Them have nursed seven picnics and delighted more man and his three man did father my seven picnics and I did love all of them, no good as them is. For am I not the same granny nanny fighting with the maroon gorillas? Am I not Kudger's woman and Paul Bogus too? Am I not the same washer woman, the one who cut cane, sweep the road and darn the defeat in men's eyes? I, with elephants hide, still glare, still get, still get photographed by the tourists. But what I know about the market woman, hmm? what I know, before rooster crow and morning washes its eye, me roll me cutter and bear me fruits from me head. The truck broad breaks down a bread at your shop, me hear you stop and someone help me with the load. As the ride tum tum the fry fritters and planting from me chest, me hope the pit of them get up for the school and Beverly make them tea and Keith full up the drum them and Jean and Carol sweep out the house and Trevor sweep the dust clean from in front of the steps. The market, a thousand hands roasting pan coal, bartering all around. But what I know about the market woman, whose lips be fat and cut shit and turn round and half of the cheeks of she eyed. Market day, lady, come buy fruits. Gwe, your face look like old rag, itch upon barbed wire. Them woman who squeeze them foot in spike heel shoes and powder them husband absence can't stand the contented perspiration of a market woman. Go ahead, Bob, why your face? Your husband asleep with me. <laughs> market day. Market day. Lady, come buy fruits. Come buy veg. The market woman are sell them cheap. Come, it's market day. Thank you. So, you know, that was my tribute to Miss Lou and that poem was inspired by um, all that I got from her. Wow. <laughs> all right. My belly full, you know. Right now, man, even though Rena found my dirty Ronnie has a tough bad, you know, serious thing. This is this is serious thing between Sang Bird and me and Professor Opal. Me, me feel like I me feel me no know if you said to anybody right now, you know, me not have, have no word if you say no me out a word. But you know what? I did meet Miss Lou. Mas Ran was the godfather for my aunt, and I got to go into pantomime for free. 
<laughs> that was my auntie Rochi that I, you know, to be able to have met her, not, not knowing that I was meeting somebody that was iconic because she was like always a lot. Come on, baby. And she grab you and she hug you. And you kind of like, feel like a little baby, a little something, you know, when she hold and hug you, it's like you're her child, you know? And um, I think so much of her in that respect, but it's now that I'm older and she's not here that I can relate and says, I met her. I knew her, but I didn't know her as a, you know, as a celebrity kind of a person. I knew her as, you know, Auntie Rochi, you know, Miss Lou, you know. But anyway, thank you so much, Professor Opal. I I would have loved to discuss maybe one of these days, if you have the time, to talk about women. How time Louise Bennett gave to women. Um, are we run things, you know? We don't talk much, but are we run things in a corner, dear? Because they say behind every successful man is a strong woman. I'd love to use the word rotted. Just forgive me for it. It can express my vocabulary a little bit there. But yes, we are run things. We know what are going. We know exactly how things are going. And you ever notice, even when you mention about the market woman, everybody's selling the same thing, you know? And everybody end up selling off everything before they go home. It's amazing. It's all customer service. And who can? Because when you say the, the husband asleep with her, I mean, right there, so that woman mouth shut up. She'll go home faster than lightning to go ask the husband, what going on? Tell me something. What I mean, that the, that the business shut down fast, 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 fast. Louise Bennett loved literature, which is one of the things that, um, that I enjoy is reading and um, understanding and just, you know, your mind is taken to a whole different level of dream and imagination. The more you read, you get to imagine, you know, when on the internet and stuff, people might, you know, you watch a movie, whatever the case is, but you don't really get to, to see it in your mind. And um, so she described herself, you described herself as an average student. But in 1936, she made her first public appearance on Christmas Day at a concert, recited a poem in Jamaican dialect. She was presented a prize of two guineas by the impersonate. What is this? Yeah, Eric Coverley. Eric Wilson Coverley, right. Better known as Clark Talk who became her husband in 1954. She used the money to buy a pair of shoes. My favorite word is imagine that. She continued to write in dialect, following in the footsteps of the well-known Jamaican poet, Claude McKay, although he only flirted with the style. Louise Bell, it was Talawa, she was little bit, but she, she was bigger than life, child. She was way up there. Prince. Hello, Prince X. How are you, my friend? Can you turn on Prince for me, um, Mia? Hello, Prince. Tell us thank your, you your Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. You hear me good? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay. Now, as you see, there are three of us in the picture, which we re really represent three generations of, of, of people. And that is my chain link, really. I mean, here um, our attack heritage, Madam Chair, Lorraine. Lorraine. And this is Thais, a future doctor. I want to indoctrinate her from early. <laughs> so, so this is, 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 is how it started. Um, for me, Professor Adessa Point, I've, it just right down in my head. At Woolmers, they were trying to take the Jamaican out of the students. They try to do it in church and all proper social gathering. Once it's proper, you, you, you leave the Jamaican at home, which is so unfortunate. But on the other hand, Miss Lou is so Jamaican and everything Jamaican, but she never cuss a bad word yet. She never used a curse word yet. Yet she, she lose some very strong language, very Jamaican language. So when people try to tell me that I have to express myself because I'm not Jamaican, I'm not a Miss Lou never did it. 
And I never hear anybody did it. They say she did it privately. And I've been with people who have been with me so many, many times. So these are the things, the lessons that we want to. We can be Jamaican and dignified. And that's what Miss Lou represents. The dignity in us, the dignity in our work, the dignity in our attitude, and the dignity towards uplifting the human race. And as we chat along in our own lives and on our merits, irrespective of how successful we think we are, how successful we think we not are, remember the dignity. Remember the dignity. It's very important. The dignity. Jamaicans should be known worldwide for dignity. So for me, when I hear Miss Lou, I hear dignity. The dignity of the Jamaican people. So we don't have to follow because Miss Lou is a world unto herself. So we have a world to follow in Miss Lou. And I'm really happy for that. Um, some times ago, when I was a little bit younger, I joined the group Curry Folk Singers. And that got me interaction with the music of Miss Lou. I keep I saying earlier about two weeks ago that we have, all of us is thinking so much about the poems. But Miss Lou was so much more than poems. Um, her music by Nan Tree, you know what I mean? Karamiaki, and um, give me some. You, you, they just come, come, come to me and under the sycamore tree and all of those things. Those are wonderful music. And this was before DJ write lyrics. So Miss Lou was, as Muta would I say, boy, the first dubs and the first DJ too. And one of the things we should not remember is Miss Lou as a social commentator. Miss Lou used to have a social commentary just before news, uh, midday news in, in the days. And there was she, to make a wonderful social commentary. When I, I grew up with my granny, and growing up with my granny at that time, he said, you got bed seven o'clock. Young people hear me? Bedtime is seven o'clock. And what you have is the radio to keep the company. And two things stand out in the radio. Mm -hmm. Of course, this Peter and her life in town, and Miss Lou and Mastron. Yes. So mm -hmm. here again, Miss Lou was in her house. Miss Lou and Mastron as professor, am I right? A staple in our home. A staple in our community. When we are in school, those who are drama-minded or feel the inclination. You can't say poem unless you can say a Miss Lou poem. When you can't do a Miss Lou poem, a few lines, then you say, yeah, man, him can't do poem, man, him can't do poem. But if you, if you can't do a Miss Lou poem, you ain't going no, you ain't going to JCDC. You ain't going, you ain't going. So this is the impact that, that I have. Um, I wrote a poem about, maybe about, about 18 years ago, and I've, recited one and two times, but not many. And I use the opportunity to do the poem now, or at least a version of it, so you can hear where my mind was back then. How did we slew and tank? Since then, put up a statue in an of you at the first time you come get to say, how did you? So how did you? Two enough time we are starved and we belly full of gas. But still yet, then put up a statue of you and be thankful for that. So how do you do, Miss Lou? How do you do, Miss Lou? And thank you. From them, put up a statue in favor of you and the first time you come get to say, how do you do? So how do you do, Miss Lou? The poem don't finish yet because I don't reach the statue yet. But when the poem was <laughs> said, the statue, the statue wasn't in the making. So I don't want to take any credit. But I did call for the statue. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Rosemary, your time. Okay. We thank you very much. Tell us a little bit what you wanted to have done for Miss Lou's birthday. 
What was your dream? What was your passion? What was your vision? Okay. Um, each year I'm involved in some way with a tribute to Miss Lou. I've been closely associated with JCDC over the years. So that was not See very hard. That was not very hard. So whatever JCDC is doing, or the library, the Marsh Library is doing in Port Mount St. Mary, I would very much be a part. Mm -hmm. This year, I'm doing a series of works because as I hope all of you know that we are assiduously campaigning for Chief Turkey of 1760 Easter Rebellion to be a national hero of Jamaica. So within that, we want to use it as a platform to promote what we think is good about Jamaica. And so this year, I really plan a, a five-day walk where we'll be coming from Town through the North Coast into St. Mary, around the junction, and finish in Kingston. And today, I will be at the statue to say, how do Miss Lou? Um, so that was what I had <laughs> to go to the studio and say the poem there. But because of the COVID restrictions, first it was adjusted. And when I, when I re-planned re it, um, Sunday was the only no movement day. So I said, OK, and that no movement day, I would do a Facebook live interaction, you know, to keep it going. And then the prime minister up the air anti a bit. And so Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, I become no movements there. So I couldn't move at all. <laughs> so I was just left with the Facebook interaction. Um, it didn't go as less as well as I want to, but something happened. We had record. And with that, it really touched that journalistic instinct in me. He said, oh, you're really a journalist. You really got to just be, the, be a journalist and serve the people. Now, journalists, there are two kinds of journalists. There are those who deal with it from a responsibility. And there are those who deal with it from an agenda. I am not an agenda person. I am a responsible responsibility person. So I facilitate all sides. So... I'm the kind of journalist that wouldn't really get funding because the journalists that we really get funding are those that are agenda. <laughs> I hope you understand what I mean. But I'm going to embark on it. So that was what I had planned for me, Miss Lou. The walk from Westmoreland, Bethel Town into Kingston and then finish for the first time I will be visiting the, the statue. And I, as a man who is known for walking, I couldn't just take bus go up to this go up to there. I have to really I have to really get there in a proper way. So that was what I planned. So it never happened this year. I don't think COVID will move past March next year. Write that down. So next year the seventh I will do the work for Miss Lou. And do and do do miss do at feed averse statue. Oh, they do miss. Your time, Rosemary. Thumbs all the way, Prince yeah. X. You are the connector, man. You are the connector. You're my bomb. You are my friend. Oh Lord, I was just um. But, and I speak Patwa quite well. As a matter of fact, I think I'm the best Patwa talk around the place. And I've been in the United States now for 47 years. And I just got a text saying, oh, you don't even have a twang? Who, somebody find that. <laughs> I need a little twang. My kids throw lots for me to speak Jamaican. And when I'm ready, um, when I'm Robert Young, you're interfering in my business. Uriah can preach tomorrow. <laughs> he loves Uriah preach. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I have oh that one ready to say. You have that one ready to All right. There is, um, I, listen, man. Mia, could you put somebody in? She's on the backstage. She wants to come on. No, this one makes me look like a picnic. I'm not going to lie, but you know, they're coming on here. But Louise Bennett here. 
not surprisingly, Miss Bennett was ostracized by educated Jamaicans who saw the local patois as inferior to the Oxford English they tried to speak. The island newspaper, the Gleaner, refused at first to publish her poems, but later paid her for a regular Sunday column, which became popular. Popular. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, no man. I, songbird, gear yourself up, child, but I have a, a young lady online. I hope she put on her brazier, you know, because basically right about now, you know, I'm ready for... <laughs> Never mind. All things goes. It's open mic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, listen. Look out, Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for the Jamaica? Listen, uh, I, I mean, Professor Opal, I do keep bad company, okay? <laughs> Mia, you might have to mute a few people because I have a crazy Jamaican that just came on. And I'm going to ask her on the spot. I'm just going to knock her out. How important is our language to us? Brenda, tell us. My goodness. Look who is here. Come make me hold your hand. And she got her shot. She got her shot. She got her shot. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know who it is? One, two, three, three, three. One, two, three. Oh my God. Okay, okay. Brenda, you need to tell everybody who that is. That my friend is come here, girl, come here, girl. Bird, I, 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 I. Get up a piece of me. I need to see everybody's face, Mia. I need to see everybody's face. I need a screen that I can see everybody's face. Come on, bird. Don't go away, bird. Don't go away, bird. Does anybody know who this person is? Anybody on the line know who she is? Anybody? No? That is bird. <laughs> I've seen her videos. I've seen her videos. That's a Jamaican up and coming. Come on, sing ABC for me. Honestly. Oh. ABC. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, U, V, W, X, Y, and T. Now I know my ABC is I want to see with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I very soon I'm going to be repenting and I'll be going back in the pulpit. But Brenda, every, everybody know who Brenda is before I go on. Anybody know who Brenda is? Raise your hand. Don't you don't know who Brenda is. Oh, one lady, go that one crazy lady, go one next one, next one. All right. That crazy woman from the plane will say, you ready for me? Jamaica, you ready for me? Bam. Okay, Brenda, interesting here. How important is our language? How important is our language? Patois. You see, I understand others were saying before whether or not they were to plan. When them said we got way about them send it, um, it's necessary to code switch. It's, um, it's a survival tool. It's a survival mechanism. We have the comfort, depending on I have uh, or had, both father and mother as Jamaican parents in Brooklyn, New York, in Bushwick. Inside the house was Jamaica. Outside of the door are them people that place. That's a foreign. Outside there, I utilize the English language as it has been poured into me through various types of educational institutions. Yes, my school I had. My born in England means a windrush wash belly, but I was educated on the island, Jam Rock, Jamaica, from seven to near 14. I am a product of St. Teresa Prep, Deanery Road, Kingston Tree. And then at some point, no ask me how me catch a Tridiga Park all age down and at the back behind Bad Boy School. 
And then I attended St. Catherine Primary, grades three to five. After that, I was awarded the wonderful moment of going to St. Jago High School and ended my Jamaican educational career because then they start boarding at Bishop Gibson High School for Girls. Patois, for me, not the P-A-T-O-I-S, but the P-A-T-W-A-H, that one lesson. It became a great survival mechanism when I went to Midwood High School, which was in the heart of Flatbush. It was then I had the opportunity to, oh, there are other Jamaicans and Barbadians and Trinidadians and St. Kitts and Belize, and the entire Caribbean was laid at my feet. But in Adam, it said, your Jamaican personality always hang good, and it gave me character. It gave me strength. School performances in Jamaica is why I can come on this Zoom and act a fool with no problem, because I was trained to do this. I was afforded the opportunity. We're talking early 70s. I won TV station, and then, then they switched to two. But remember, me remember when they turn off, I'm a grandmother. I listen to Miss Lou on the radio. But we're listening to Miss Lou with the fact that, yes, she didn't live down the street from me. So it's a different type of listening to Miss Lou because my grandmother knew her. Up there in them, the hills that went past the big statue. But other than that, no, I have somebody. I'm in the Gullah Beach <laughs> in Charleston, South Carolina. The closest I'd like to think as I can get to our African connection here on this mainland, this continent. Yet at the same time, them still have fine yardy bones from the 1700s, you know. So Jamaica man, they come here a long time. Mixed in with the DNA of all the other enslaved are Jamaican traits. So there is some reason that I am here connecting the dots across the diaspora. Do I have a reason other than it nice and hot? And I've discovered <laughs> some sometimes who just come from Jamaica. They're my clients are Jamaican or hot. So. so that's why I'll run to Jamaica when it's cold. But in but on the other thing, they have some fig tree when they call them palmetto. And they really look like they could have one or two coconut, but they don't have no coconut on them. So I want I want a hard thing. I that's the hardest thing for Livia. So them don't have no coconut tree. But banana tree I grow a red roadside. If you want a breadfruit made up for called Tracy and but enough yardy there. Enough yardy there. The Jamaican population in South Carolina, in the low country, is increasing. I'm right downtown. Others who have families and can get land, you can raise cow, goat, sheep, and run around and have space. They're further out. Somerville, Monk's Corner, between here, the Midlands, and Columbia. But I'm down by the water, where I can fish and shrimp and crab, and a cruise ship leave from there. So, so I get a cruise ticket one day, I got cruise go in a month, go, yeah. No, actually, my cruise go in a Port Royal, because cruise ship are come at Kingston. Um, you go and Falmouth too. Well, you don't worry about Falmouth. My listen, let me tell you something. You see that St. Thomas corridor where them are rebuilt? The same seawall them have to go into at New Kingston is the same seawall issue they have to go through here in Charleston, South Carolina. There's so many things that align well. At the um South Carolina Reggae Jerk and Wine Festival, Lorna Beck puts on we don't have that much. We have Jamaicans and some of them undercover because they're married into what okay other parts of the country is gullah geet it's african-american families when you're here in south carolina in the low country it's a gullah geechee nation that's the original root 40 to 60 percent of african-americans trace their roots here so when you say yeah look from pure african dna i got there so you're not a stretch so when you're looking so at me uh -huh. something brenda how important is your patois? It's important because it identifies. When we first come in and people saw Bajan, I had no idea that Barbados was considered to be the mother of Charleston. See, it, it's when the, when the colonizers mm -hmm. were moving around, you set up base first in Barbados. But when you when your friends are like, okay, I'm in Boston, I got New York, so I'm in Virginia, they're like, oh, South Carolina. There's a direct route. So that's where those enslaved were brought from. So when you hear an accent here, it sounds very much Bayesian, but that Gullah is our same Patois. 
the only difference had to be the the various specific Africans that they brought. They brought them for reasons. You didn't just take general labor. You brought Sierra Leoneans to to grow rice because the colonizers didn't know how to grow rice. So you brought them here to build the brand Carolina Gold, which has continued to fund and fund and fund the American dream. You brought those from Togo and Benin okay. because you need to grow indigo. Patwa gets me being, moving through here. Patwa being raised by Jamaican. Pardon? To be raised by Jamaican parents. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the British language and the Patwa when they want to get your attention? Oh no, my parents would use Patwa. They're not going. My my I had older parents. My wash belly. My mother had me at forty two. There's, there's no, my mother, it's not that, okay, first of all, mommy was not a Patwa speaker. You have to remember, I went to Jamaica at seven. So in Jamaica at seven at that time, the consistent Patwa from all around is a new language to my head. So of course I'd be, hold up, your chat where's I anybody else? Your chat was other than the one with Banya? Your walk barefoot more than the one you were Banya? Everything that my spirit didn't get to do not having been born there on the island. It did. And it did in grander measures. So Patwa is instilled in me, per se, even more than someone who was born on the island because it's a second language to me. It's not my mother and spoke. My mother was very proper. My mother knew how to chew gum with her mouth closed. You know, there's certain things mm -hmm. she did not do. For mommy to speak in... Patwa per se. Mm -mm -mm. Daddy on a different hand. That's a racha man. A heartland didn't come from. It might come different. So I, I had both blends. But I also okay. have the opportunity to be exposed to people who I can exchange that patwa with. That's the key. See, it's like coming across someone the other day and they said a sentence and they said, huh? Hold on there. Where you come from? Jamaica. Okay, which part of the yard you come from? Because then we have to broke it down. Because just the the audio the audio recognition of the slight lilting in a language already drops defense barriers. It allows you to have a moment with someone. I am in South Carolina. It is still black and white, largely African American. So, and when one has their opportunity to embrace their full identity mm -hmm. yes do they know me as the jamaican yes because yes so one i'm only one of a couple of a few fish in the water it's not like being jamaican in brooklyn but just part of a massive see that's what i have to represent correctly so yes the language is important the all right important because it it gives you life well, no, me know why mama, mommy gave you up for adoption. Ha <laughs> ha Yes, with no so problem. You know how much, madam, if me, if me board a people here in Jamaica for five years, I'm not, madam, me have, you know, remember, you know, me a barrel pit there hey. as well. I am one of the consummate of the new generation of Jamaicans. There was, there was a time when we made sure that we sent our children to Jamaica to go to school. I'm happy to say mine at and least we went for a few years. Then there was a time mm -hmm. when no don't go live with relatives. You board in other people's houses. I did that. Or you go to boarding school. I did that. So there are these things about the other Jamaica where you are not necessarily within that nurturing band of family where you have to carve your identity. I eat this. I mean this in our change. Yard give me all what I need for carry me through right after to 56 and beyond. If me never have it, I have no idea who I'd be, darling. We would not be having these conversations. I would have multiple degrees. I would have followed whatever dreams it is my parents had for me. And I would have assimilated quite well into the American dream. Would I have been happy? I don't think so. Would I be mostly one who would go to Jamaica and visit resorts? Yes. But as such, and I mean that. It's around Jamaica and seven days all through the bush, down through the coming up, up through the side, out of get a whole river, not even necessarily out of get a pan. Them places there. Go down in that area castle and come back through. It's these things that allow me to be me. So as an adult going into Jamaica, 
no have to deal with no parents, no pitman, no school, no lawyer, no dead left, just to discover Jamaica as an adult is a whole different thing. And this is not okay. How, I don't know how Stella got her groove back. I don't have resort money. I have visit Jamaica, I walk ground money. So I may not even get my groove back like Stella, but I'm sitting off a yard. <laughs> All right, listen up now, man. You have one more minute, Miss Lou. Miss Lou, to... happy birthday to Miss Lou, no man. Lou, Come on, baby. Send me Miss Miss Lou. As she she upon mold me without her, I would not be. The execution and elocution of the language, the mix up and blend up of the flow. That's what allows me to be me. So I am forever indebted, will always acknowledge. And because others present better than I do, I mean, I have all of the piece of crap that I'm in the sports have. I leave what to the experts and stay in the shadows because I'll always be ready for Jamaica in any form you want to give it to me. Enough blessings. Mm. Big up for Enough yourself. Blessings. Always, Rosemary. <laughs> Be a watch and listen well. And remember, <laughs> if you're ready for Jamaica, Jamaica is always ready for you, wherever you can find us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't you move. You stay right there. So just mute our Mia. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Brenda. I love you, baby girl. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's exactly 8:30. We are at the down. You know, I don't know how you'd we're, we're, we're going, we're coming down now, which is gonna give everybody their last words so we can finish off. It has been a great time. Okay. Where is um we we're, we're having a wonderful time, Professor? You agree that we are right? We're doing okay, Prof. We're doing well. We're doing good. We're doing well. Thank you. In um <laughs> in um Miss Bennett, Miss Louise Bennett won a British Council scholarship to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London in 1945, and was the first Black student there. After graduation, she worked with British. Repertory companies in 1945 and 1946. She was host of the BBC radio show Caribbean Carnival. I probably said that already. You know something, but okay, it's worth repeating. I am as silly as they come. It is great to be host to be hosting this program. And where is Anjali Rose? Not there. Um, let her back in, Mia. And um, Violet Lawrence, say your last word, honey. Oh, so I don't have Violet. enough time for I don't have enough time for You have a last time. word. Okay. So I just wanted to say, Miss Lou, Miss Lou lives on in spirit. In, she's everywhere with us where her poems are read, where she's celebrated. Miss Lou will live forever. Her legacy will live forever with us. And as we continue to celebrate, as our children will celebrate, I know grandchildren. And um, thank you for allowing me to be here. Thanks, Rosemary. Thank you, Miss Violet. Angeline Rose, your last words. I am just so grateful for the legacy that went before us. It is amazing that anywhere we are in the world, it is so easy for us to find each other because of our language. And we, we might be able to fit in to the world because of our skin color blending in with other Caribbean nations, but you, you cannot deny, you cannot deny a Jamaican when we meet another Jamaican. <laughs> When we just get all the way down to greeting each other, talking to each other, and all of that. And I just absolutely love it because our our language makes us unique from the rest of the world. And that that is huge. Do you have a poem? I do. Please tell us I about it. I want to do um love letter by Miss Louise Bennett. Um, I, I particularly love this one, um, mainly because of what the ladies were saying before. You kind of can't <laughs> describe. Jamaica just have this flavor where when we say it, we just get right to the point, and it's just so colorful. And I absolutely love it. So, Love Letter by Miss Lou. 
my darling love, my little dove, my dumpling, my gazada, my sweetie Sue, I goes for you. Like how flies goes for sugar. As I put my pen to paper and my pen nibs start to fly, me remembrance remember the first day you catch me eye. You did just come off a tram car. A bus was to your right. A car switched past your left yard and you tap stiff with fright. You draw up your mouth up just like when Jackass start yarn. My heart go boom, boom, boom. And me know what make me bad. Don't scan me little letter. No laugh after me, you uh. Me learning not too grand. So what me can't spell, me draw. The thing in the corner with the freckle is me heart. And the and the plate with yam and saltfish mean that we can never part. So see how me draw the two face them that look pan one another. Well, one is me and one is you. Take anyone you rather. It's not a cockroach foot. This is a finger with a ring. And it mean me want to be married you. This line is a piece of string. Take it, put it round your ring finger and round your ring hand. Careful to get it the right size. And then give it to this woman. The woman is me. Now, sweet rice, keep swell. Till we till me see you next. Accept me, young love, while I close with love and bands and eggs. Ay ay ay. <laughs> ah, Lord, I think you and Miss Violet I need to make to go get married. <laughs> <laughs> Carlene, come on, baby. You have your last word. Come on, baby girl. Thanks, Miss Rose. I'm Thank loving you, it. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm sure that a lot of persons don't know this about Miss Lou. Miss Lou had this thing for nicknames. <laughs> I don't know if you all recognized it, but especially with us Jamaicans, if you have a nickname, and it suits you and you're okay with it, own it. Miss Lou, I think I remembered her when I heard about the the Bible in Patwa. And I got so excited. I was over the moon. I'm like, me have to get one of them. <laughs> the Bible in Patwa. I still have yet to find one. So if you all will help me. But my final words is a poem by Miss Lou called Bun and Cheese. And the back story of it, it's all about how persons get their names. Bun and Cheese by Louise Bennett. Then why did you Miss Matty? And I make an a macarana tease. Them I kill themselves with laugh and I call her Bun and Cheese. Them say from Good Friday morning, I just no stop ease. Morning, noon and night and bedtime. She and the have Bun and Cheese. For breakfast, lunch, dinner. She a goes up bun and cheese. She can go to church and the moving picture, if you please. She no count selfish and aki. Cut her yai, pass rice and peas. Here are me, put pot pan fire when me have me bun and cheese. Easter time, come and gone way. There's a moment fly like breeze. But as long as Miss Matty live, them boy green color bun and cheese. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Never heard that one before. Thank you, Carlene. Thank you, darling. No Thank you very much. All right, now, where are we now? We are back to 
Professor Opal. So I want to end with this poem, Colonization in Reverse, and particularly because of the wind rush um, and what's happening now. Um, but again, Miss Lu understood uh, the history and uh, certainly spoke about, spoke against colonization. And this poem really speaks to her prophecy, in a sense, you know, that Jamaicans would take over to a certain extent England. And um, I think it's, it's, it's fitting that uh, we have a, a, a Meghan Markle who is married to Prince Charles. Not that I'm in any way endorsing that family or that hierarchy, but it's Prince part Williams, of the, yeah. Prince Harry, Prince Harry, Prince Harry. Yes, but I think it's part of the colonization or decolonization process that is still in in order. Colonization in reverse. What a joyful news, Miss Matthew. I feel like my heart won't bust. Jamaica people colonizing England in reverse. By the hundreds and the thousands from country, from town. They buy the shipload and the plane load. Jamaica at England bound. Them are poor out of Jamaica. Everybody future plan is to get a big time job and settle in the motherland. What an island, what a people. Man and woman, old and young, just a pack them bag and baggage and turn history upside down. Some people don't like travel, but if you show them loyal, but to show them loyalty, them all are open up cheap fear to England agency. And week by week, them shipping off them countrymen like fire to immigrate and populate the seat of the empire. Uno a hears life is a funny. Uno see the ton about. Jamaican live for box bread out of English people mouth. For when them catch a England and start play them different role, some will settle down to walk and some will settle for the dole. Jane said the dole is not too bad cause because they paying she two pounds a week to seek a job that suit her dignity. Mr. Jane will never find work at the rate how she they look for all day to sleep and anti fan coach and read love stories. What a devil meant to England. Them fierce war and brave the worst. But I wonder how them gonna stand colonization in reverse. And so big respect to Miss Lou, big respect for her honoring us for us giving us ourselves, for us interrogating the empire and for prophesying that, you know, we will overcome and will continue to overcome. So definitely she was a nationalist, Miss Lou, and she spread and celebrated us in every way. And I offer tremendous respect. And I just wanna plug 101 Voices for Miss Lou, and the cover by uh, Tommy Ricketts. Miss Lou is depicted as a warrior. She has her pen, the nib of the pen in uh, the, uh, that she's holding like a sword and in the back because she's using her pen as she has done to write our stories and to write our freedom and our liberation. So we can't go wrong. We can't turn back. We have to keep going. Thank you so much. Thank you. For some reason at this moment, Mia, you've been very quiet. Could you tell us um, a little bit about women of culture? You will find that um, Professor Opal is a sister that you would love to love to meet before you, I mean, you'd like to meet all of us, but just tell us a little bit of your story. Well, you know, Woman of Culture um, started back in 2016, and it stems from when I was growing up in, in school, I was, I would say culturally discriminated because where I was living, they did not understand this Jamaican accent 
or I didn't look how they thought I should look. And I would get teased and I'd go home crying to my mother, you know, and why them don't all like me and, you know, and um, one thing she always, always instill is that to be proud of your culture and where you're from. And if them no no, you teach them the richness of your culture. And later on um, working, um, I found that other women that I spoke to also experienced the same thing and they would not speak with their accent, you know, on the job, unless they're around their family, you know, or off the clock. And so I started Woman of Culture to educate women that no matter where you come from, always be proud of your culture. We can speak with their cultural accent professionally. And for those that don't know, again, teach them and educate them the richness of your culture. So I want to celebrate, you know, um, women. I am a mixture, I'm born in Jamaica but I have a cultural heritage of my father, Costa Rican. My um, mother's side is Arabic Indian. My great grandparents are Scots. Um, my great, great grandmother's from Bangladesh. I have Chinese, I have Costa Rican. I'm a mixture. Um, and it's funny on my birthday, it falls on Women International Day. So again, I represent every woman around the world. So I am so proud, you know, of my Jamaican culture. And I just, I wanna celebrate all, all women, no matter where you come from, we have a, um, a culture and we have a story to tell. So love up yourself, always come first. Could you, um, not just the culture, but what else mm -hmm. do you celebrate in women? Men, you celebrate men also, but I would like, to, I'm just. Yeah, know. we have, yeah, we also have the men of culture, the same thing. Um, and just embracing, you know, inspire other women um, as well. I also have the ribbon of survivors. I'm also a 21 year breast cancer survivor. So I celebrate individuals um, that are either survivors or continue to battle any type of chronic illness as well. And you have a magazine called? KO Magazine, and we celebrate health and wellness, we celebrate culture, we celebrate, uh, bring awareness to um, wellness food. We have a little bit of everything. It's like a one stop of everything there. And you can go online to kuomagazine.com and um, you'll see all the, the women from around the world that we have, have honored and share their bios. You'll see all the, <clears throat> the ribbons of survivors oh, yeah. that uh, again, we have honored and um, everything there, everything that we do, the Glow Show, we have once a month, every third Tuesday, we have special guests on the Glow Show that talk about health and wellness. We talk about business. We talk about a little bit of everything. Also, um, recently you were celebrated on the floor of House of Representative, is that in yes. Florida? Yes, I received the uh, Congressional Award from um, Darren Soto um, for being a community leader, an advocate, and you know what I've been doing for the past 12 years with KO Magazine as a um, cultural advocate, as a health advocate, and just celebrating and bringing awareness to um, the culture within Central Florida. So that was extremely a great honor. Well, we celebrate you, Miss um, Mia Allman, for being my girlfriend, being my friend, <laughs> as you, everybody you have put up with me. You know, I love you guys dearly. And uh, we all have something to contribute. That's why we have Gungusu. 
you know what I'm saying? You know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Can't forget the coconut oil in there, you know, a little bit of flavor, you know. Are we, are we good, man? Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, Jesus in heaven. Oh, she could have been. In the spirit, the last time I heard um, Brenda cook Aki and Saltfish, she made me nearly dead. Lord of mercy, she said, you fool the Aki. Who fool Aki to granny? Who fool Aki? <laughs> she said, you don't mash it up. You have to fold it. So we are a conglomerate of women with a story, many stories. And yes. because of our stories and our and our background, it makes us strong and it makes us talawa. But right. Mr. Um, um, Prince, my prince, I had to tell them earlier before you came on that inside every chicken coop, we have to have a rooster. So you stay put. You, you turn to the man. You I, turn to the <laughs> well, the birds are the And for our very, very, very last word. <laughs> everybody, you, bravo to you everyone are for being on the show. Robert, young. You, you, you will stand a bow like 10,000 lion babies. You, you, you will keep your mind and heart as one. You'll fly free, you'll fly free in a disgidiac woman of her culture. Um. All right. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> we have 10 minutes leave. Songbird. Yes. My sister. My bununus. Bununus. You have the last word, my darling. Well, you know. Tell me, I'm building up here, up here. We got a sweet peach. And when rain fall or pass and sickness, son, you rise up, preach. Yes, son, the gun, rain fall. I'm passing, couldn't left him yard. People was in a church. I saw you rise get way broad. He climb up on the pulpit. He lean over, he look down, he steer by all him enemy, them a rash them with him tongue. The first one in Tekan was lies. Who did tell the lie for me? He steer straight in her face and say, the what the mouthy mouthy. Him said, the what the rosam, the what the meddlesome. And then him look for me and said, the what the slaughtered lamb. Him take on teacher Brown, who did for when him was the size of that. Teacher beat him one day because him called teacher top not. <laughs> so Roy, I get him revenge now. For him start straight from Mr. Brown. I say, let him that sit it on the house stop not come down. May him take on butcher Jones, who noted for sell scraps his meat. <laughs> but you see, but when Raya in a him take on butcher Jones, who know to sell scrap his meat, him said, Thou shalt not give thy neighbors full of loops to eat. Yes, him tell them off. Them noise them, but them are full to the brim. But when Raya in a pulpit, then can't back answer him. So when church member mail me, I don't answer. I just stay in my yard until I just so when church member mail me, I don't answer. I just wait till one rainy day when person stay home and you write a preach. Even time work is over now we see in time. Me they walk on mountain, they walk on mountain, they walk on mountain tide. Make we put the beaker upon the way. Make we intensing dance and play ring ding on the mountain side. Good. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
Um, before before we go, could we have Miss Lou version of Happy Birthday? Oh yes, yes. I, what's that? A version of Miss Lou. Happy birthday! 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 Bird, come on, say happy birthday, Bird. Nice having you, John Edge Hill. Bird, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, Miss Luna. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday Happy birthday. All right. Oh, oh. <laughs> and so many yards come, come strong. Lovely. Yes, darling. Woman of culture. When you're ready for I'm me, I, I out of here, hear boss. We're all over the diaspora, and Miss Lou are doing our works. <laughs> Miss, Lou, Miss Lou still doing her work. I, it's a beautiful thing. Look what I have here. Oi. Anyway, any confessions while we're at it? <laughs> Rina fall and it I never tough. want. Carried me Aki. Go to Linstead Market and not a what he would sell. Aye. I never want. Carried me Aki. Go to Linstead Market and not a what he would sell. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, what a night that would be. Aye. What a Saturday night. Oh, Lord, what a night that would be if I never sell anything. Everybody come feel up, feel up what a mother no bring. Everybody come feel up, feel up what a mother no bring. Oh, Lord, what a night, what a night, what a night, what a Saturday night. Lord, what a night, what a night, what a Saturday night. Hey, Lord, who know the one about mango time and you turn your pot, you, you turn pot down? Who know the pot down, them down, mango time. I may not drink coffee tea. Here, how nice it may be. Mango time, jam your teeth in an umbrella, jam your way right up to him. Wash your pot, turn them down. Mango time. Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh my gosh, bird, bird, yes, songbird is is mashing me up, man. Songbird, <laughs> mashing me up. Bird, bird. Bird and songbird over there, sir. Yeah, bird's eye and songbird. Mm -hmm. Come to me, come to me. Give me one of your song no bird. Give me one of your song no man. Me, um, look at me standing strong on my own. Yes, praises be to the most I want. King of kings, ruler over all, conquering lion of Judah. I, I, I am a woman of purpose, and I, I, I will stand up for like 10,000 lion days. I, I, I will keep my mind and heart as one. I fly free, I fly free in a disgidian. Call me by my name, I am ready to roll. Once the rules remain the same, now the story can told. Call me any time, I will never stop out. Because my is on the rise, don't say anything about that. Come. Boy, come, boy, come. Mix up, mix up. Sweet like Gandhi. Love. I still have two more minutes. I would love to hear birds sing Mount Amas Eliza. 
Which one now there? Mouta Masila is a girl in a year, your mother call you. Mouta Masila is a girl in a year, your mother call you. Mouta Masila is a girl in a year, your mother call you. From the day you're born, you know, no seriously, girl, you're foolish, you're foolish, you're foolish. Which one that? Aye. Aye. That's it. Oh. From your barn, I want you not know, seriously. Get you foolish, you foolish, you foolish. Oh, you foolish, you foolish, you foolish. Come, no, seriously, Elena. And divine and the berry. Come, no, seriously. And never, seriously. For I hit cure your body and a belly. Hey. Oh, I hit you, you uh -huh. <laughs> I tell you. One minute. Boy, when I say I love one more one come together, bam, the nation rise again. <laughs> it is 9 p.m. Good night. Oh, good. Goodbye. Oh, Thank good. you, Mia. Awesome job. Thank you, Carlene. Thank you, Angeline. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Songbird. Thank you, Prince. Thank you, Bird. Yes, Big up yes, yourself. Yes. Big up yourself. Come on, Mia. You got to cut us off if not, we're going to go on and on and on and on. Come on, Songbird. <laughs> Take us out. Take us out. There you go. All right. What Thank you, darling. And woman of culture, we would like to thank our special guests for an amazing show this evening to celebrate and a tribute to Louise Bennett, Miss Lou, and to celebrate the Jamaican culture that we all love so much and that we were born into. And you, the viewers, thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, stay safe and stay healthy. What good? What good? What good? Every day I'm good up if I like you. What good? What good every day and good up if I like you. What good every day, every way. What good, good, good. good.